Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you tuning in tonight. For logging on. Tonight is our conclusion of, us, of the Fool of the Spirit series. This is part three, the conclusion. And part three uh, deals with the relation. Part three deals with one's own inner life. And the last, the last three fruit of the spirit deals with one's own inner life. Mm -hmm. And you have to have this. This has to be your character. This has to be the individual's character. And so, once again, we thank you for logging on. This is the conclusion of Fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, my name is Pastor William Beasley Sr. of New Beginnings Community Church. And uh, we thank you once again. We're going to, uh, before we conclude, Get into this lesson. We're going to have a word of prayer with bowed heads. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you tonight once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. Thank you for mine to be in your presence, Lord, mine to share in your word, the bread of life. Lord God, we pray that your anointing of spirit will be present in this place. You say, where two or three are gathered, that you would be in the midst, Lord, we believe your word. And we believe, Lord God, that. You are God of your word. We believe your spirit and we praise you and glorify you. It's in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Fruit of the Spirit. The conclusion, part three, as it pertains to one's inner life. The fruit of the Spirit is an awesome thing that God has done in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. We know that it's singular in number, but it's nine, nine elements of the Spirit. And we broke them down into three parts. The first three dealt with relation to God. The, the second three dealt with relation to one another. And the last three dealt with one's own inner life. And so, very interesting how God amen, places his spirit in our hearts and our minds. And, and the work that it's doing for you and I. Mm -hmm. He's worthy to be praised. So the first of the last three is faith. <laughs> Woo! Faith. Now, I got to remind you now, understand these last three deals with one's own inner life or inner self. Mm -hmm. And so when God gave us the Holy Ghost. He gave us faith. Faith is a fruit of the Spirit. It's it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. And it, it, it works for us if we are subject to it. It works for us. And understand, our scripture says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so now understand it, if you if we retract and backtrack all the way up the other six at this point, and the other three dealt with individuals and the first three dealt with, with God, and as we deal with one another, it's required to be long-suffering, it's required to be gentle, it's required to be goodness. And so we know sometimes we have situations where our Faith is tested in that area. Mm -hmm. So, so in that, in those areas, look at the Holy Ghost. He's placed faith down in there, so we would be able to control ourselves, well, control ourselves, but we'd be able to believe God in spite uh, of our situation. We'd be able to uh, hold on to God's word and promises. We, be, we will be able to be subject to his spirit mm -hmm. because we'll have the faith. And so this is an awesome thing that the Lord has done, has placed in his spirit. And he's placed it in your heart and my heart. This is an awesome thing. 
So faith, this is why he says, without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible to please him. And uh, uh, let's, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Uh, it's not on our paper. This is just uh, what you call a uh, I would say uh, improv or ad lib, whatever. This, Clarification. This is we just we gonna go there because we we talking about it and uh, understanding we dealing with these last fruits are dealing with oneself and so I have to have faith. You have to have faith. Faith in what? Faith in God's word. Mm -hmm. And so Hebrews chapter eleven. And I'm going to read, the, I'm going to start at the first verse and read it with understanding. It says, I'll be reading from the King James Version, so it may sound a little different. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. By faith, the elders obtain a good report. Mm -hmm. Talking about individual, one's individual life, the character, yourself. Now, I want you to catch the third verse. The third verse says, through faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. Now that's a mouthful right there. Mm -hmm. It's not through intellect. It's not through any other uh, source, resource, or any other, any anything. It's not through anything but faith that we understand the world was framed by the word of God. We know that in the beginning, uh, was God and the word was with God and the word was God. We know that in the beginning God spoke mm -hmm. let there be light and there was light so we understand that the world we understand by faith that the world was spoken or created by by the word of God mm -hmm. so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear and so the things that you see, he didn't, he didn't use those to make it. What you see appeared out of what he said. Mm -hmm. And so fourth verse said, by faith, Abel, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts and being dead yet speaking. We're going to skip down to the sixth verse. And the sixth verse said, But without faith it's impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. That's what we wanted to get to. Without faith it's impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. And he's given you and I that ability in the Holy Ghost. He's given you and I that ability because there is no other, there is no other means, no other source. There is no other way to believe God except by faith. No other way. Mm -hmm. No other gimmick. No, no trick. Nothing. No, no other way. And you have to simply believe him by his word. And what his word says, because uh, God's promises are, are sure. And so faith for you and I, as, as it deals with this lesson, as it deals with our own inner being, our life, it says fidelity, which makes one true to his promise and faithful to his task. And so this is what faith does for one's inner, inner being, inner life. It's like that old saying, word is bond. It makes your word bond. Because you, you, you have your faith, because of your faith. And it was placed in you and I in the spirit. And so it makes one true to his promise and faithful to his task. Understand we're dealing with uh, these last fruit deals with our own inner 
in a being, in a character. So not only does faith uh, believe God, but faith makes us a, a man or woman of our word, mm -hmm. of our promise. It makes us faithful yes. because that's the fruit of the Spirit, and it's in us. 1 Corinthians 13 and 7. First Corinthians 13 and 7 says, bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things. Understanding we're talking about faith. We're talking about that fidelity which makes one true to his promise. It bears all things. Faith, faith bears all things. Go back up a few to long suffering. We understand that, that faith bears all things. Faith believes all things. Mm -hmm. This is working on one's inner being, inner self. This is what faith says. You can say you have faith, but I think it was James said, uh, show me your faith by your works. In other words, show me your faith by believing what the word says, by, by acting and living according to the word, or by your actions, mm -hmm. more better, by your actions. Show me your faith by your actions. And so you can see he and Paul agree right here, because Paul says, bears all things. So Jane would say, show me your faith by your actions. Are you bearing all things? Do you have faith enough to bear all things? Mm -hmm. Do you have faith enough to believe all things? Are you impatient, not long-suffering? So we see how all the fruit of the Spirit is tied up in the Holy Ghost, and it's given to us, and it works. It's working, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and it's working. It's working on us. It's making. It's making and building us. And the beautiful thing about it is. God has empowered us with this. He equipped us with this. He didn't just push us out there and tell us to make it on our own. He empowered us with this spirit, with his spirit, and, and has given us the ability uh, to manifest or, or, or to produce what he has purpose in our life if we believe his word, if we believe in him. Galatians, the fifth chapter and the sixth verse. Still talking about faith. Galatians, the fifth chapter in the sixth verse, and it says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, mm -hmm. but faith which worketh by love. Mm -hmm. And so, like we discussed briefly in the, our first and part one that love is the foundation of all these graces. Love, faith work by love. If you rewind a little bit, and now you understand why faith bears all things. Because mm -hmm. it works by love. Now you understand why faith believes all things. Because it works by love. Now you understand why James said, show me your faith by your actions. You can say you have faith, but mm, let y'all digest that a little bit. They're not, they're not contradicting each other. And so, uh, right there in the book of Galatians, if you go up to the uh, to the third verse with me. Mm -hmm. And we'll read back down now. It says, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of none effect unto you. Whosoever you are, just whosoever you are, 
justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. I testify again to every man. He's reminding them again mm -hmm. that every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to the whole law. In other words, he's obligated to fulfill the law. He said, if that's the case, he said, if that's the case, Christ is become of no effect unto you. In other words, he said, if that's the case, you become estranged to Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whosoever you are, trying to be justified by the law, Ye are fallen from grace. Understand what he's saying. Fifth verse says, For we, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. There it is. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availed anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith would work it by love. And so you have to understand, Paul is reminding the Galatians again that before Christ, they were shut up to faith. They were shut up to faith. They were governed by the schoolmaster. They were taught and led by the schoolmaster. Mm -hmm. But when Christ came, sacrificed his life, crucified and died and rose again, they were no longer under the law, no longer under the schoolmaster yeah. because of the sacrifice, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so he said, if you're still trying to gain salvation by the righteousness of the law, you have, you have estranged yourself from Christ. You're fallen from grace. Mm. Right. It takes faith. You have to have faith. It takes faith. It takes faith takes faith. The Lord is looking for faith. He's looking for you and I to believe his word. To believe him. And especially to believe the work that Jesus Christ has done in our lives and for our salvation and for the atoning and the reconciliation of us back to God. It takes faith. You have to believe that. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Meekness. Once again, we're dealing these last three fruits deal with one's inner life, inner being. Mm -hmm. You and I have to be meek. Woo! Now, we have to be meek. Mm -hmm. yeah. And meek, it says, not weakness, but control strength. Right. It is submission to God and unselfishness to our fellow men, our fellow man. So, like I say, these last three deal with one's inner being. And our character has to be meek. We have to be one of a meek character. Let's go to Titus mm -hmm. 3 and 2. And so this is the epistle of Paul unto Titus. In Titus and so Paul is telling Titus, well, I say three and two. Yes. The third chapter, second verse. To speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. Paul wrote this letter to Titus, explaining to Titus that this is his character, this, he should strive to have this characteristic. And not only should he do it, but he should also teach it to his assembly. Because a leader is simply a example. And so Paul is telling him to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, be gentle, Mm -hmm. Showing all meekness unto all men. Right. This is the fruit of the Spirit for one's own inner character. 
showing meekness unto all men. Woo! <laughs> showing meekness unto all men. We can do it. We have to do it. Uh, 1 Peter 3 and 4. Peter's going to show you how you do it. He's going to show us how to do it. 1 Peter Third chapter, the fourth verse. Yep, he's going to show us how to do it. And it says, uh, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. This is where it happened. This is where the transformation and the, and the development of the maturity has to happen in the heart. Has to happen. Because the Bible lets us know, even in this scripture lets us know that the heart is not corruptible. What are you saying? It said, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. What do you mean the heart? Is the heart corruptible? Not corruptible? One scripture says uh, from the abundance of the heart the mouth speak. One scripture says that what goes in a man is not what defiles the man. It said, but what defiles a man is what comes out of the man. Because what comes out of the man comes from the heart. Mm. Mm. So, is the heart not corruptible? In other words, the heart, in other words, uh, what's in your heart is going to come out. <laughs> <clears throat> so let it be in the heart. Let meekness be in the heart because if meekness is in the heart, then meekness would manifest. Because the heart is going to show, the heart is going to produce what's in it. And so, if meekness is in it, then meekness will come out. One scripture say that a, uh, a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. And then it says a, 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 a good tree cannot bring forth what? Corruptible fruit or bad fruit because it's what's, it's what's in the heart. It's what's in it. So understand the Lord is working on your heart. He's working on my heart. <clears throat> and so it's not weak. Meekness is not weakness, but it's controlled strength. It is submission to God and unselfishness to our fellow man. And he's equipped us with this characteristic. And it says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. That's in the sight of God a great price. Mm -hmm. uh, that's precious unto God. And so... The, the, the ninth and final uh, <laughs> fruit the ninth and final fruit and the third and final fruit of, of one's inner life is temperance 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 says rational restraint of the natural impulses self control Temperance said natural restraint. I mean, it said rational restraint of the natural impulses, self-control. We're talking about the fruit of the spirit now. Fruit of the spirit. So when you ever have, when you when you ever caught in conflict, or if you ever have some things going on in your life, and uh, the conviction not to re, the conviction not to not to react or not to respond comes upon you. Don't override it. 
<laughs> That's the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> don't get prideful. Don't get into yourself. Don't override it. The, the, the Holy Ghost is doing what it's supposed to do. Right. It's it's supposed to control you. It's supposed to control you. That's it's in the it's in that. It's supposed to control you. But the issue that you and I have is that we override it. We override it. And we tell ourselves, no, we got to do this. Whatever this may be, you know, if it's <laughs> if it's the last word, we tell ourselves, no, I got to have the last word. But you don't have to have the last word. Amen. Especially, <laughs> especially if if you're overriding the conviction of the Holy Ghost. Because this this is the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. And it, and the fruit of the spirit has temperance. And it is temperate. And so it said rational restraint of the natural impulses, self-control. Let's go to Titus again. Uh, well, no, 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 no. Let's go. Yeah, let's go to Titus. Mm -hmm. The first chapter. And then we'll come back to Peter. Okay. Titus. The first chapter. Titus, the first chapter, the seventh verse. And the eighth verse. The eighth verse, the eighth verse is what we want, but we're going to read the seventh verse because I typo. We're going to read the seventh and the eighth verse. Mm -hmm. first, first Titus. It said, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self will not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We let that digest a little bit. Because <laughs> uh, we can't just we can't just think that uh, Paul is telling Titus he has to be like that. And uh, let's not get caught up on words when they say bishop. So let's not get caught up on words and think that only a bishop has to be like that. But any child, any child of God, any born again believer, this has to be their characteristic. All of these you cannot be ang soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre, mm -hmm. but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, okay. holy, temperate. There's that self-control again. Mm -hmm. For the child of God, this is one's inner being, inner life. This is what we have to. The fruit of the spirit. I'll put it to you like this. <laughs> the scripture says that the spirit is willing. <laughs> but the flesh is, is weak. Mm -hmm. I might as well tell the truth. <laughs> the Bible says that the spirit is willing. But the flesh is is weak, mm -hmm. and that's just no other way to put it. Because you can't, add, I can't add to it. Mm -hmm. I can't take away from it. There's no other way to put it. And uh, and so, don't justify it. Just believe it. Second right. uh, Peter one and six. Peter gonna help. Peter gonna try to help us out. <laughs> I'll say Second Peter one and six. Mm -hmm. Second Peter one and six says, "And to knowledge, temperance." Mm -hmm. And to temperance, <laughs> patience. And to patience, 
godliness. Peter is trying to help us accomplish this for one's inner being. To knowledge, he says, to knowledge, he said, add, add to knowledge temperance. Add to knowledge temperance. Because the Bible lets us know knowledge puffs up. Hmm. Knowledge puffs up. So he's shaking. No, I'm shaking my finger. I can't. <laughs> Scripture letting us know to knowledge. Add to knowledge temperance because knowledge puffs up. Be careful. Be careful. And to temperance, patience. Mm. And to patience, godliness. <laughs> And so we have a uh, we have a task before us. That's why there's that's why we don't have time to be judging one another and yeah. criticizing one another and condemning one. We don't have time for that. Because the fruit of the spirit has to has to these fruit of the spirit has to manifest in our lives. And catch this. This is one fruit. Hmm. I'm going to say that again. These fruit or these characteristics has to manifest, be manifested in our lives because this is one fruit. Right. All nine of these characters or elements right. is one fruit. And so you can't you can't be, you know, you can't boast about having joy and then you don't have temperance. All right. So we got work to do. Mm -hmm. We have okay. work to do. Uh, did we read Titus? I put. We read Titus 1. Yeah, 1 and 8. I put 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4. But then that's. We'll go there, but. We ran into a snag, but as long as we, as long as we get the emphasis of temperance, we'll be all right. We'll let you deal with the snag on your own. <laughs> but we ran into a little snag, but understanding the emphasis we're dealing with it, we're, we're dealing with temperance as fruit of the spirit. And 1 Thessalonians 4 and 4 says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And so we're dealing with it in the category or the emphasis of temperance, mm -hmm. knowing how to control his vessel. Let every one of you that every one of you should know how to possess that word possess or to control his his uh his vessel in sanctification and in honor. So we're dealing with it in the aspect of temperance, being able to control. Now the snare is I ran into two studies and then I, I looked at another source and they said the same thing and then I looked at another source and it said something different. So I'm gonna share it with you and you have to you have to look it up and study it yourself. But understand we're dealing with it as temperance. We have to be temperate. But one study said that that everyone should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor means every man should know how to, uh, his vessel is his wife. Mm -hmm. That was one study. And then one, one study said that that means everyone should know how to control his own body. Mm -hmm. So you deal with that. Read it in the context of the rest of it. When you read it in the context of the rest of it, you see it's dealing with fornication you see, it's dealing with Paul is warning them not to defraud their brother 
not to overstep their bounds, to follow their brother. So there's an argument there for uh, both aspects. Because the Thessalonians, according to the study, they were Gentiles, and so they came there. They came out of some some wild sexual activity type stuff. But Paul is letting them know that now that you're Christians, mm -hmm. you got to know how to possess your vessel. And so, depending on your study, commune your wife or commune your own body. And if you read it, it continues to deal with fornication and so forth and on. So we'll leave that to you. That's your homework. <laughs> but understand, we're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with it in the aspect of temperance. Right. And God, and the fruit of the Spirit is temperance. Regardless, regardless of what situation it is, the fruit of the Spirit is temperance. It's self-control. And so we pray that you got something out of it. Like us on YouTube. You can find all three parts on YouTube. Play them together. And uh, we thank you for, for logging on. Before we go, we're going to have a quick word of prayer. We're about it. The gracious of Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you tonight once again for the visitation of your spirit. For the mind to be in service, Lord, the mind to share your word, the bread of life. We pray, Father God, that you will continue to be the Lord of our lives. Lead us, guide us, and provide, Lord God. And we just praise you and glorify you. We look forward to your return. And we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.